Hello and welcome back to Metro Exodus. I'm slightly disappointed that the screen did not change. Fanatics on the banks of Volca. Cannibals in the mountain bunker. Slavers on the shores of the dried out sea. Now, we have another intermittent chapter. This one is called Summer. Continuing the topic. Um, Anna. Let's see. I sincerely hope that with the maps we recovered in the Caspian Desert, she will finally manage to persuade her father that we can forget about the war and finally settle somewhere. It's time we found a new home, where Anna and I could finally live like a proper family is supposed to. Journal Mirror. Did I cover the Yamantau bunker with him? The Yamantau bunker was a huge disappointment for each of us, but for the Kurinal, what we found there was a total catastrophe. Not only there was no Supreme Commander there, it looked like there was none left at all. So the people in control of Metra would have no superior in this world which meant there was no, chan no chance for the colonel to be pardoned for treason and ever return to Moscow. Not only would he have to spend the rest of his years in exile, an old cripple in charge of a few deserters, instead of the, instead of the esteemed commander of the order he used to be. It appeared that all his life, all his battles in the metro were useless. There were no signs of the war still going on, so back in Moscow, uh, our indomitable colonel simply helped a bunch of usurpers deceive the whole population of Metra. Even though he was kept out of the loop, how could he take this blow and not crumble going back to commanding us all again? I might hate his hard-headedness and blindness, yet I can't help but admire his self-control and courage. Even in the Caspian Desert, where most of our people were down with dehydration, the colonel persevered. He continued coordinating operations, issuing orders, and even gave his share of water to the soldiers while continuing to search for redemption. Uh, there and then, Milo finally accepted the fact that the war was long over and there were no occupying forces. He even seemed to accept the fact that his days of glory were over with only quiet sunset years in some backwater ahead. The only thing he wouldn't accept, no matter what, was the danger his daughter, his daughter's life was in out, in. Outliving Anna was the most terrifying prospect he had ever faced. Let's make it a wee bit darker. Damir. Yet having discovered the state that people sharing half of his blood were in on the shores of the dried up sea, Damir changed. He did everything in his power to set them free, but eventually it was time to leave. Besides, the blood of his father's ancient nomadic people, there's Svatan blood in Damir's veins, and its call proved stronger. Katya really is amazing. If not for her efforts, our crew was bound to stay forever in the Caspian Sands. We survived in the Metro Tunnels, we won the Battle of D6, we survived where anybody else would die, but dehydration and infections of the desert had almost done us in. Stepan, 
despite all of his strength and resilience, would have definitely died there had Katya not nursed him back to health. It seems she would have never forgiven herself had she not been able to. Katya herself, however, she suffered from the heat, never let that show. Driven by her example, Nastya not only didn't whine in the slightest, but did her best to help her mother tend to the sick. What in the world would we have done without them? Cannibals? Did not, didn't I read it? Oh yeah, there was no intermittent chapter between the Yamantau and uh, the Caspian. The cannibals residing in the Yamantau complex seem suffer from happy cerebral damage caused by an infectious disease they contracted through their diet. So their words are barely legible. Still, they are exceptionally determined in pursuing their prey and complete disregard of their own safety makes them a dangerous enemy indeed. Tribals. The local population of the Caspian Desert, ruthlessly subjugated by a tyrannical criminal empire, the tribals are mostly young and serve their masters willingly, remaining servile and dedicated to them no matter what t terrible oppression they are... Yeah. They are repay for their service with all... With, uh, God damn it, that my brain is broken. All tribals are devout followers of the cult of the Holy Flame instituted by the Baron. Their adherence to the tenets of faith being brutally enforced by their masters to keep them under control. Svarog Oil The criminal empire ruling the portion of Caspian Desert we visited was controlled by a supreme ruler called the Baron, using the largest oil rig in the area as his seat of power. Apparently the Baron's climb to power started within Svarog Oil, an oil drilling company that had been controlling all of the oil extraction in the area when the war broke out. Spiderbug, male and female. These dwellers of abandoned tunnels and other dark places, of which there is no shortage in our world, are extremely aggressive, agile, strong and well-armored, making them tough opponents when uh, you consider their tendency to live and hunt in places uh, and hunt in packs. They become a veritable nightmare few. Their only real weakness, although a tremendous one, is light. Even a mere flashlight can make them thrash about in panic and die in seconds. The female. They, uh, the females of the species tend to be armored even better than their male counterparts, but prefer to stay at a certain distance from their prey. At least until they disable it with wads of web, they shoot with amazing power and accuracy. Their only real weakness is light. Weapons. To hide. Besides its pneumatics, Stokarev also improved on Tihari's armor, inventing a very effective incendiary round that can be easily made in the field out of two bearing bowls, an empty ampule or a piece of glass tube, a teaspoonful of any fuel, and a chemical initiator. Of course, you can't fit many of these rounds into the weapons magazine, but they are so effective you rarely need more than one at a time. Gatlin and Baldog. Despite their weight and number of components in their construction, the multi-barreled machine guns, like the creation of somebody's bothered genius, have one advantage over the regular ones. They, if you have the necessary talent and industriousness, can be made out of a couple bicycle frames and a scooter engine with nothing but a thin file. A working machine gun of a more conventional scheme, on the other hand, can't really be made without decent machinery and steel. Besides, it is quite easy to burn out a conventional machine gun's barrel, just fire a few really long series in quick succession, and the bullets start hitting everything, save for the target. Uh, you can't easily repeat that trick with a multi-barreled pep box, though, as... Uh, where would you find the sheer number of bullets required for that? No wonder the gunsmith of the Brave New World started making these monsters. You can't really ask for anything better to fight hordes of mutants at once. 
The Bulldog didn't really have a chance to make a name for itself in the numerous wars mankind was so fond of waging before the apocalypse. The weapon's creators intended it to replace its ancestor, the venerable Kalash, yet mankind was able to neatly wrap its history up without the newcomer's involvement. So the Bulldog started reaping its share of lives only after the end of the world. I have to give the Bulldog's designers credit. It is vastly superior to Kalash in damage output, handling accuracy, has a lower rate of fire, making bursts more controllable, and is much lighter to boot. Yet, despite all that, you don't really see these weapons often. The Bulldog is much more complex than Clash and requires skillful maintenance. It is hardly surprising that most of the survivors prefer its elder brother, the indestructible Clash. Shall we leave it dark, or shall we crank it up a notch? What do you know? Everything is perfect, Artyom. Follow us. Standard barrel and duck bill choke changes the weapon's spread pattern, diverting the pellets to the sides. Is there anything interesting in this direction? I believe that's our... That's our fuel thing, right? Oh, and we also grabbed the... Uh, the car with us. Tokarev's note. Crest, I'm writing you a note because I really wouldn't want anyone to overhear. You see, I'm preparing a wedding surprise for Katya and Stepan, and I need your help. I'm making rings for them, and I already have the band to make them out of, I just need their sizes. Stepan's not a problem, after all I made gloves for all the crew, but I never measured Katya's fingers, and it would be a dead giveaway if I wanted to do it now. I know you have a sharp eye, so perhaps you could help me get the size right without measuring. I could also use some help buffing the rings once they're soldered, as there is not much time left. Oh, and apparently that's a place to do a little bit of smoking, but uh, no. Smoking kills you. Don't smoke. Attention, please. Half a year on the road, and 4,000 clicks behind us. We have been through a lot. All right, people. I do understand I can't keep it a secret much longer. After a careful study of the satellite maps we've obtained, <laughs> and much deliberation, we've found a place we could call our new home. <coughs> it is a river valley. There's forest and a hydroelectric power plant. Yeah. This place is quite far from densely populated areas, which, as our journey has proven, 
is important. We're about two days away from it now. So, congratulations! Yeah! 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 Yet, uh, this is not our last order of business for today. Stepan, Katya. Oh, Prince! Stepan, Katya, repeat after me. I take you to be my spouse. I take you to be my spouse. Oh, we have a branded two cups, by the way. It says and Aurora. To hold you nice. From this day forward. And vow to hold you from this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer, <coughs> for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and, and in health. health. To love and to cherish to and until to cherish death was part. To us part. As the captain of this ship, I hereby pronounce you husband and wife. Live long and be happy. Oh, and Gorka! 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 Oh, that's not good. I think that's blood. No, you are not. I'm fine now. You look like crap. Oh, wait, wait. You I already removed the table? This. The old man is furious. Oh, Artyom's getting chewed out today. It's not Artyom's fault. I fell into that stupid bunker all by myself. And if Dad says one word to him about it, I'll tear him a new one. Yes, this is getting old. As soon as something happens, it's always Artyom's fault, even when he had nothing to do with it. That's just his fate. Fate? Get out of here! Yes, in any case, Katya will calm the colonel down. You shouldn't worry either, Anna. She'll fix you in no time at all. She's good. No doubt about that. We drew the lucky ticket with her, especially you, Stepan. That's it, Fat. Thank you, Anna. Let us not panic and think constructively. So, Katya, what do you think? I think that trusting some degenerate's diagnosis wouldn't be wise. A move from humid metro into the desert with its dry heat and sandstorms is a stress for us. Yes, I do think she'd be hit really bad right off the start had it my been My thoughts gas. exactly. Thus, first I'll check her condition to the best of my knowledge. Also, we're approaching the valley with its forest air. That alone could heal her. I'm sorry to intervene, but did something happen? Oh, Anna coughed out some blood. My god. Do you really think it's the same? Sounds more like TB to me. 
That's for sure. Maybe we can handle. We've got enough antibiotics, and air does help with that. But what if... What if that degenerate was right, Katya? What do we do? Is there a medicine? There was an air defense battery station in our village. Right on the brink of war, they received a new drug. It saved a lot of people after gas exposure and general poisoning. I'll check my mom's records and find its name. I think it was produced in Novosibirsk. Right, Novosibirsk. Yermak, your opinion. For Anna's sake, I'd go to the edges of the earth. As for Novosibirsk, it's about 2,000 clicks. Then it's decided. We head for the valley. If it is suitable, we settle there. If our state worsens, I'll take a group of volunteers to fight that drug. So Katya, please, find that name for I'll us. I'll find it. Don't worry. One more thing, Artyom. I want no surprises in that valley. You are our most seasoned scout. So take the rail car, one volunteer, and go check everything out before we arrive. Let's go back for now. Tell Anna and the people to calm down. Poor girl. Now I understand why she was so down lately. Just imagine thinking about all that for so long. So, what is the jury's verdict? <laughs> now here are your orders, everyone. First of all, stay calm. The plan stands. We head for that valley with its fresh air and clean water. Then we go about settling there. Yeah, if Anna's health... Dad, please. I repeat, Anna, in case you start getting worse, there's a drug Katya told us about, so we can go and find it for you, if it is needed. Hmm, that sounds like a great plan. I'd also like to say this. Guys, please don't worry. I've been feeling pretty bad as it is for ruining the party. Oh, come on, you didn't ruin anything. I just brought myself down to rock bottom over that bastard from Yamantau. Though it must just be the sand and desert climate. Of course that must be it. We were discussing exactly that just now. All right, a toast. To you guys. Just be happy together. To you! To you! Great toast! <clears throat> I'm not into songs as they might be copyrighted. I have a lingering feeling that I might not be done here, but there is this song. God damn it. Oh, wait a second. Damir. I wanted to tell you for some time, but hadn't had a chance. Anna asked if I wanted to stay back then. Well, sure I did. They were my people, even though I couldn't find any relatives. Besides, there are still lots of bandits to kill there. But the Baron is dead. Now you can lead the people. They know those animals can be beaten. Cannon must be beaten. And now they have to fight for their freedom and take it by their own hand, so that not to give it up ever again, despite any odds. 
Still, the initial push was given by us, by you. I won't forget this, Artyom, and I hope to one day pay this debt back. Caprakmet, brother. The vegetation is not in the correct place. I think it, he's still singing the song. I can't say I've ever been religious, but right now I'm begging all gods, please, watch over Anna and make the valley cure her of her affliction. In the meantime, Alyosha and I are on a recon mission. We have no idea of what is waiting for us there. Though Alyosha seems convinced that there are going to be crowds of women eagerly anticipating his arrival. If that turns out to be the case, then I have the best companion possible for this mission. Is it the same valley that was described in one of the notes that uh, in, in case the hydroelectric plant fails, like if the dam fails, then it's all gonna be... Uh, it will be ruined. It's just that by the valley, uh, there is a triangle with an like, electricity symbol and it says like uh, hydroelectric plant. Yes, I must say, I'm rather partial to this valley. Take air for one. Makes your head swim. Never smelled air like this in my life. I bet if we spend a week there, it won't just cure Anna. It'll make Colonel grow his feet back. Damn, this is one bumpy ride. The rails are all bent. The whole track seems to be fixing to slide down. I sure hope it can hold our weight. Let's hail the Aurora and tell them to take the other road. Come in, Aurora. This is forward recon. Do you read? Over. Aurora News. Reading aloud and clear. Over. Colonel, sir. This track won't hold the Aurora. Take the main one. Over. General situation is completely awesome, Colonel. Sir, Anna is sure to love it here. Over. Glad to hear that. Carry on. Aurora, over and out. So the plan goes like this. We get to that dam, check it out quickly, and call them over. Just take a look at all this beauty, huh? Don't you want them to see it sooner? Look at that church for me. The hell? Uh, you are not my friend. Are you gonna be my new friend? Move on! We've got to 
Our guys caught your friend, but I can see your two are not bandits. I'll help you out if you don't do anything stupid. Gotta run now. Just stay out of sight and you'll be fine. Catch you later. Cool. Um. Hello there. I think I need my backpack. Cool. Who was that woman? I wish I knew her name so that I could thank her properly for saving me. Courtesy is rather low on my list of priorities at the moment though. Uh, I lost all of my equipment in the river and the radio is broken, so I don't even have any means of contacting the Aurora. Getting to the dam where Alosha and I were supposed to go seems to be my best chance now. I should follow the old road. So we are on the other side. So originally we were going somewhere over there, right? I guess so. I have absolutely nothing with me, so this is amazing. Yep, I, I certainly cannot call my backpack. Let's find at least some stick or something, I don't know. What the hell? Yeah, that'll do. It's dirty as hell, but... Hmm. I have just one. One boat. I mean, once again, it's better than nothing. Though I can't help but wish for more. Technically, I'm not a marauder, right? Uh, bandit. This territory belongs to the 
brethren of the coast, get lost or pay with your life like others, death to intruders. Are you? Don't leave me here, man. There's lots of fucking wolves here. Please, man, don't leave me here. Nice. The fuckers tied me up so tight, I can't feel my arms. I am not sure about that. Look, man, the rope's too tight. I can't free myself. I I think I should not interfere. I I don't think I can trust you. So um ha have a good day. Okay, we cannot go this way. Excuse me. Huh. So you know the saying, curiosity killed the cat, right? What will happen if I will release the guy? Let's make a save. I have saved. Just left me here for the wolves. I am torn on that decision.
So I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing, right? I don't seem to recognize you. Which barrack are you from? You should have some nice gear. Thank In you. In any case, don't go there alone. I tried, and well, you know what happened. Ah, these bitches hiding like fucking lizards. Ah, I found a way in and was going back already when the fuckers jumped me. Fuck. Ah, fuck. Both legs went to sleep. Can't even move now. Ah, I'll wait here till they wake up and go bring the boys. Ah, we have a good chance to get a drop on them forest fuckers now. We'll tear them apart like fucking rags. Mm. Just look, man. Tell me, which barrack are you from after all? I thought I knew everyone. Are you even from our camp? Ah, uh, well, if you're not one of ours, I'm in your debt anyways. Thank you, man. <laughs> As for these fuckers, if you want to get through their territory, you have to move like a ghost. Though, uh, you look so tough, you could take them all out by yourself, I bet. So if you see any of them fuckers, do them all in. They have it coming to them for hanging our boys from those posts. I'm very not confident in you. Uh, good luck, man. You'll need it. Some rabbits. I don't have anything that can use these bullets. So why do you give me them? Okay, so one way or another I just come to the same spot. Communism is dead. Now that the statue of this dude, Lenin, is quite literally in every Russian city. Like, you can easily determine where the center of the city is. You just find the statue. No readables, no postcards, right? At least I have some resources. It's not a big. Oh, maybe they do have a, read a readable. Unsent letter. Dear Santa. Oh, first mistake. It's a pioneer camp, so it should not be Santa. It should be Uncle Frost, or how do we call it? Uh, my name is Larissa. I'm eight, and I was uh, a good girl this year. I wasn't a coward. I killed and skinned two deer and wounded one bandit in the leg, and I'm not even lying. That's why I wanted to ask for a letter from my mom and dad this Christmas, if that isn't too much trouble for you. I miss them something awful, and I don't need any other presents. On the other hand, if this letter, and it seems like it was written after the war, then the fact that you address Santa may finally mean that 
there are some occupying forces. Avast! Stop right there! It's the brethren of the coaster! Take another step and we run our rig on you! Aye! Another step and you die! <laughs> yeah, so beat it, you scallywags! If you know what's good for your ground-loving ass, even one of you drifters we caught today is too much! Aye! Be a moon doggy and get lost! <laughs> Looks like Alyosha has survived the fall as well. At least the locals seem to be speaking of him. I should try and find him, preferably without alerting the locals. They seem to be protective of their territory. Marked as danger, and yet I go here. Why? I wonder who and why killed these guys, and am I a target as well? <coughs> this writing actually says death. So, is it wise to go here? Probably not. And I saw a snake. So that's also nice.
Oh yeah. Give me that thing. What do we have up top? Not much. But we do have uh, another crossbow. And we seem to have a zip line, Which might take me... I did not explore everything. Like, I can try to go... Like this, right? I know that the zip line will take me somewhere behind the fence. Yeah, and this leads me to the yeah, okay, same point, okay. I've been thinking about asking all this time. All this pirate stuff, the corpses on the post, do you guys really think the teacher wanted this? The teacher wanted us to defend ourselves. Well, none of this stuff helps. The bandits have been seen in the village again. Plus, our guys caught a drifter today. This just means they need us to remind them the lesson. That's why we're here. We'll catch a couple and make some fresh scarecrows. Well, bandits, I do understand. They did terrible things here. But this new drifter doesn't look like a bandit. Perhaps he was just passing by. If he is not a bandit, he should have just passed us by. But no, he crawled out of the river here. I say make a scarecrow out of him and keep the others away. I don't know about this, really. Okay, so we have this big thing. This is was probably the place where I would have arrived from the zip line, right? I don't seem to be alone in this place. Hey, could that tumble with third as a ball? Now what do you think? Yeah, sure. Try this on someone stupid. You kicked that ball into the river, so now you have to make one. It took two weeks already. Come on, I'm making it. There's just a bit of sewing left. I just meant we could kick this one around for now. It's round and all. Look! <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. You're a turtle champ. Asshole. 
<laughs> Get back to sewing, you center forward. The master of the forest is around. So, do you think they are really coming? Come on, why would they? You look at how many of them are in one post. Even the pioneers are on our work now. The guy said they saw the damn bandit at the village already. Shut up, you two! Are you in an ambush or what? I'm the girl man. If they do come, they hang and that does it. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't interfere with those guys. You know, if they want to be in, the, in, in an ambush, who am I to stop them, right? Maybe I shouldn't holster my weapon because otherwise I do not see the indicator. Okay. Did you hear that the cattle are going to attack that train? I bet the pioneers are going to throw a fit at the council meeting. Ah, the hell with the pioneers. Can you even believe we all grew up together and the teacher taught us all the same? But look at them now, they're all cowards. Besides, how would they know? Well, they're probably picking on us all the time, like we're picking on them. The wolves, what do you mean? Like I did. I picked on Olga. She was taking a dip in the lake and didn't notice me. So what then? The rat on that girl. Go where you were going. Yeah. All right, I guess I'll go. I wish she stopped hanging with those cowards. By the way, why do they get to hang around with most of the girls? This ain't fair. Anyone standing here. So, and they do have a nice zip point over there. I guess to just pass this. No, I actually might need it because I do not see an overland route over there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Many of those 
those thrifters are there, I wonder. Because you never know. As if the intruders would come here. The wolves, that's for sure. I'm trying not to disturb anyone. So apparently there was some underground ro route in this place, right? Yeah, but I don't like making sound. It will make sound, right? So it's three of them, plus a decent scope. I'll take this one actually. Oh. Yeah, that's another type, the one that I did not have. grew out of this camp as we grew out of childish games and now we are living for the forest. We swear we'll become better and stronger and we'll survive in this new world. 147 signatures. And I seem to have skipped one uh, readable. 
diaries um, the Caspian null I don't need the Caspian thank you very much summer and then the taika note on the crossbow unsent letter little kids note first greenhouse on the right after the bridge so it's with the with the dudes right yeah i've been in this uh, house but uh, yeah come in <laughs> over are you two all right God. where do i hear it from I think it's about time that we leave this place and we just go further. But before we do that, I would like to wrap the episode. Uh, and I would like to say thank you for staying with me. I hope you enjoy my company and my gameplay. If uh, that is the case, then by all means, leave me a like. Subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, let me know down in the comments what I can improve for you. Hope to see you next time. Have a nice day out there. And bye.